Two Stuart Series steam engines part 5. After painting the engine parts using Great Western Railway Green, the time has arrived for some careful reassembly. As I frequently paint Stuart engines this colour, you won't be wondering why I'm painting it Great Western Railway Green. Well, the truth is, I had a tin of paint left over from the Simplex Prairie Tank project and it seemed such a shame to waste it, so I used it up on this engine. It's time to fit the upper part of the engine to the base, and for this I need to use a sealant, not a gasket. As a lot of viewers who watch my videos regularly will notice, I'm not a fan, generally speaking, of silicone rubber as a sealant where steam engines are concerned. But on this rare occasion, it's perfect for sealing the gap between the base and the engine. Notice that I applied the silicone rubber sealant on the inside of the edge of the base. This will be fine because when the top part of the engine is bolted to the base, the silicone rubber will not be squeezed out around the edge, so it won't be visible. That's the plan anyway. In this clip, I'm positioning the engine on the base. Originally, this engine had been assembled and then painted, which meant that all the bolts were painted too, and I don't want to do this. I'm going to use brass bolts, which will look quite nice when they're all tightened down. To give them their proper title, they are 4BA dome head machine screws, and they're more than strong enough to hold the top part of the engine to the base. And also when the engine's fully together, they will match the other brass and gunmetal parts that will be fitted to the engine. This was a surprisingly fiddly job, refitting the cladding. It's painted black, so I'm being very careful not to scratch it, and thankfully I didn't. It snapped back into position, just where I needed it to be. The cladding is also held in place with some machine screws that have a round head, but this time they are 7BA, not 4BA. On the front of this engine are two holes in the crankcase. One of them is a breather vent and the other one is a filler cap that holds a dipstick. And it occurs to me that it is a very good idea to plug these holes up when working near to them with small bolts. Time now to fit the cylinder drains. These are taper plug cocks and I bought these via eBay. They appear to be quite good. It may be beginner's look but the right hand one fitted perfectly in the correct position. As you've just seen, I applied some Loctite 542 to the threads so there were no leaks. I wasn't so lucky with the second one. To make this so it's in the right position, it needs a shim washer, but I didn't want to fit a shim washer on the outside. But then I had a brainwave and realised I could fit a shim washer between the cladding and the cylinder block. All I need to do is slacken off the 7BA bolt to allow me to move the cladding away from the cylinder and hopefully the shim washer should become invisible when the job's finished. I had to be very careful with this job. I used a screwdriver initially to press the shim washer into position, and then a combination of my scriber and another screwdriver to finalise the position of the shim washer. And believe me, I'm being really careful not to scratch the black paint. If I scratch the black paint, the pad has to come off, be rubbed down and repainted. Thankfully, I didn't have a problem and very soon the second drain cock was in the right position and you can't see the shim washer. The 7BA brass bolt at the bottom was a bit long or the thread in the casting wasn't deep enough. So I removed it and shortened it using my one inch belt sander. Then I fitted it back in position to hold the cladding in place. I polished up the brass vent fitting and then I tapped it in place using a piece of mahogany. Finally the inevitable happened. The machine screw fell into the hole. I shook the engine for a while, just like I would if I was making a cocktail, and the small bolt fell out onto the bench. The second time I was careful not to drop it in the hole. Originally this filler plug with the dipstick was a very tight fit, so I put it in the lathe and took a little bit of metal off the fitting, so now it's just a push fit and you can remove it easily. The next part of the job involves making a gasket for the steam chest, and I'm using the normal method, which is a black ink pad. Once I've picked up a lot of ink from the ink pad, I pressed the part onto a piece of gasket material. It didn't leave a perfect image, but it's near enough to show me where I need to make the holes. To make the holes for the bolts, I'm just using a hole punch. Very simple to use and easy to line up on the marks. Leaving the ink still wet, the next part of the job was to cut the gasket to size. And I was quite surprised to find that I didn't get too much of the ink on my fingers. 
There are other ways to make gaskets, I'm well aware of it, I just use this method because it's simple and quick. I punched a hole at each end of the steam ports, then cut the middle bit out using a very sharp Stanley knife. Health and safety warning, when using sharp tools like this, always keep your fingers behind the cutting edge, that way you will not cut yourself. To fit the steam chest to the cylinder, I'm going to use some more of these brass machine screws. One of the original bolts was sheared off in this position, and I know why, because the hole isn't as deep as it should be. Even so, I went ahead and fitted the bolts to see how many of them were too long. Then I removed them all and shortened every one of them using my one-inch belt sander. Now that the bolts are all the correct length, I can tighten them without any fear of them shearing off. Very soon the job was completed and the steam chest is now held to the cylinder. In this clip I'm refitting the piston valve into the steam chest. Before doing this I lubricated the steam chest and also the piston valve itself. To fit this valve operating yoke you have to push the piston valve all the way in then fit the yoke. And in order to line up the hole in the piston valve with the hole in the yoke you have to pull the piston valve out slightly. And once the holes are aligned, you can fit the pin. This exhaust outlet is very big and it looks quite ugly. I'm going to use it for the time being, but I think I'm going to make something a bit more stylish. What I need to do now is refit the plug to stop the oil from running out of the sump. I cleaned it up and polished it so it looked better. Once I'd fitted the drain plug, I was able to fill the crankcase with oil, not right to the top, there's a dipstick that shows you how much oil to put in it just like on a car and that is it for this episode in the next one i will modify the flywheel and complete the assembly then run the engine but that's it for now stay safe stay healthy thanks for watching and i hope you found it useful please take the time to visit my mainstream models website and click on the section of the website that says video playlists and by doing that you can find other videos that you may like to watch and by using the playlists, you can actually watch the videos back to back.